All right. Hi, everyone. Happy Thursday. Uh, good afternoon from Toronto. Good evening. Good morning, wherever you are. Uh, my name is Claudia Pollock. I am the Community and Marketing Coordinator here at Ephemera. And today I have a very special guest, John Wright, who is joining me, who is dropping two series on Ephemera today. So just to give a bit of uh, an introduction to, introduction to the audience today, um, John Wright is a photographer based in London, UK, and is most notably known for his portraits of the celebrity. He has photographed stars such as the band U2, Lady Gaga, Paul McCartney, Rihanna, Michael Jackson, and more. He has worked commercially with luxury brands, including Louis Vuitton, Dior, Fendi, Ali Saab, and other notable entities. Today, John takes the jump into the NFT world, dropping works from two distinct series, Icons and Clouded Judgments. Welcome, John. Hi, Claudia. Hi, hi. Thank you for having me online. It's really- Yes, uh, yes. <laughs> Yeah, thank you so much for being here. It's it's so awesome to have you here talking about your work today. Really quite the pleasure. So to get the conversation started, uh, this is something that I like to ask, you know, any photographer, I'm a photographer myself, um, about their, their journey. So how did you get into photography? Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, my my journey. Uh, I I uh, yeah, my journey. I, I need to try and abbreviate it because someone asked me that question at the beginning of an interview recently on a podcast, and we then talked about my journey for an hour because my journey has taken many <laughs> many different turns. Mm -hmm. um, I I fell into photography. I I was never uh, an aspirational amateur photographer, or I literally fell into it, um, which I think can sometimes be a good thing. It's a good way to get into photography because there's you don't perceive the mountain; you just suddenly you're you're walking in photography. Um, uh, so I sort of fell into it, uh, it, and I my first manifestation of, as a photographer was actually as a royal paparazzi. Um, uh, photographing the Princess of Wales and the Duchess of York, and yeah, an entirely, an entirely different world from the world that I know that I went on to populate and that I now populate. Um, so yeah, but it, I think that that introduction to just literally being thrown in at the very, very deep end uh, allowed me to uh, never, never be, never be intimidated by photography. So I. Working in that field, I realized that I was working a, in a creative industry. It, 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 at its heart was creativity, and that the area I was working in wasn't in any way creative. So I sort of pivoted um, and moved more into uh, portraiture. Yeah, and that's interesting because um, all the work that I've seen of yours, it's mainly portraiture. So was that a conscious decision on your part or is that something that you just kind of picked up and then kind of ran with? Well, I, I, again, I'm, I'm trying to keep the journey brief, but um, I, I didn't I didn't go from being a from a royal photographer to straight into portraiture. I, 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 I had I find myself uh, shooting reportage and I, I was spending a lot of time in the third world uh, shooting uh yeah, reportage, um, human rights and animal rights and, and various issues. And it was a, uh, that was a, that was, that was a difficult uh, time as a photographer because I, I was trying to use the camera to, uh, to create change. And it, I, I wasn't creating change. I was just helping to, I felt to perpetuate the imbalance between the first world in the West and the and, and the third world. Mm -hmm. And it was really as an antidote to that that I decided I wanted to use photography to entertain. Um, and the clearest way that I could see to do that was to was celebrity. Um, it, possibly my least favorite word in the English uh, dictionary but um, so it, it what that was a conscious decision to stop trying to rebalance the world with a camera and just use the camera to to entertain um, so I I pointed myself at, at portraiture um, yeah and yeah you've you've sort of highlighted the rest uh, just uh, I, I had a, a I had an extremely an extremely loud dog. I had an, an extremely <laughs> meteoric rise uh, as a as a portrait photographer, and and was soon photographing some of the names that you've just mentioned. Um, probably the most famous person being uh, uh, Mr. Michael Jackson. Um, 
I actually have the last portrait of my, Michael Jackson shot um, not long before his death, but I have I have never sold it because I uh, I. Uh, I couldn't bring myself to sell something. There was no interest in it prior to his death. It's only remarkable because it's the last portrait. But I've never sold it because I, I couldn't bring myself to profit from somebody's death. Um, but, yeah, maybe, maybe one day I'll release that picture. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then that kind of brings us into uh, talking about icons, which is one of the series that you were dropping on Ephemera today. And I, it's it's curious because you have such this of this archive of of the celebrity, you know, and, and to me that is really fascinating. And so I wanted to kind of highlight um, just on your website here this image of, you know, we can kind of go through all of these these icons here, but Rihanna and Gaga. Yeah, yeah. Hank, it's it's fantastic. It's so fascinating. I recommend anyone watching to just pop onto. Uh, John Wright's uh, website here to just take a look because the breadth of it is fantastic. But specifically, this one of Lily Allen. And yeah. when I saw this one, it's interesting in your description, you specify this was the launch pad for your commercial career as a photographer. And so yeah. can you talk about the journey there about like, how did this open the door to sh then shooting more people and kind of, you know, directing your career into this into the space? Yeah. Sure. Uh, that that uh, that picture was the sort of confluence of, of a number of factors. Um, uh, I was uh, I was becoming no, known in the UK as a, uh, uh, as a as a portrait photographer, as a celebrity portrait photographer, and I was approached by uh, Q Magazine, which uh, I, I'm, you may not know. Q Magazine. It's kind of the British Rolling Stone magazine. It was recognized as the Bible of quality music reporting. Um, and it <clears throat> it had grown a little staid, it had grown a little dull, and a new team, a new creative team had been brought in to, to reinvigorate the magazine. And they approached me to to work with them. And this this was our first project. Um, Lily was um, the hottest thing probably on the British music scene at the time and it was it was something of a of a cultural statement that they even put Lily on the front of Q magazine because it's normally the home of uh Liam Gallagher or Bono or uh Bowie or those sort of uh stars um so it was it was quite a statement to even be considering photographing her and just as we discussed the creative concept it just grew and grew and grew and yeah, it, and it, it ended up with this, and this was this was picked up, and it was front page of the newspapers. There was a there was a rather a lengthy article in the Guardian debating whether it was it was a good thing or a bad thing, and um, yeah, it, it so so that set of pictures uh, suddenly went global, and yeah, then it was then I was shooting for Rolling Stone and Vanity Fair and and things like that. So that there's no doubt that that was. Uh, that was a springboard for for the for the portrait side of my career. Fantastic. And what would you say? Because I've always been interested in this concept of like the celebrity. And what is it about you know these figures that you think hold so much power over us? Is this is there like a deeper internal need that we need to like look up to figures like this? And you know, like what do you think about that? Um. I think that there definitely is, and there's some there's some interesting sociological uh, opinions on the, the 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 culture of celebrity that goes way back to uh, the the emerging societies of the Egyptians and stuff with um, with uh, the sort of pharaohs and and Caesars and um, the that society. We, we live in pyramidic societies and we create pyramidic societies left to our own devices to create a structure. We, we create a pyramid um, and the wealth uh, is, is at the top of the pyramid. Um, and it's, it's interesting in the UK, when you look at the UK compared to the, to, to America, we've for, for a lot of our history, we've had a Royal family who are, at the, who are at the top of that pyramid. But you look at a culture like America in the twentieth century, which, which created its 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 own royalty in effect um, through through Hollywood, etc. That was the 
that was the that was kind of your, your the American royal family was the big stars of Hollywood, and they were they were iconized. Um, so I, I think society does need to do this. I don't know why we need to do it, but I think that we we have this need to create to put people on a pedestal. Um, uh, yeah, uh, the, the 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 British psyche is to put people on a pedestal and then knock them off. Um, it's, a, <laughs> it's a strange culture that we have. Um, but yeah, I think it is a societal thing. I, re I really do, and it, I think it's fascinating now uh, that they, they say that it's a it's a measure of a society that that the more people it tries to put at the top of that pyramid, and it's I think it's really interesting now that we have people. Uh, in you know, uh, Big Brother style reality TV shows, we have people just taking pictures of themselves on Instagram or TikTok or or whatever that the that that are being iconized. They are we, we're we're treating them as uh, as influencers. You know that's that's an interesting word that people for for seemingly very trivial reasons uh, are are being allowed to influence uh, other people um so yes i think i think our fascination with social media and and the gains that successful uh, content creators can make shows that we have a we have a longing for for icons and celebrities totally and and i like that you mentioned kind of like Nowadays, it's like the TikTokers and the Instagrammers, and the the influence kind of changes based on like the media we consume, and and in in a way, the media kind of like grows these influencers too. So it's it's interesting Indeed. to see that evolve. Yeah. So I'm I to I'm, I'm yep. really fascinated with 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 that body of work of mine, the, the the celebrity body of work, because the the circumstances in which that was created, those circumstances are no longer there. The the culture of images of famous people were created for editorial magazines mm -hmm. and that was part of a that was part of a commercial machine that you created these images which encouraged people to buy the magazine and therefore people would advertise in the magazine and that's that's disappearing and i i, I look at pictures like my picture of lily um rihanna uh, it's, some of the more high production level images and i think they're 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 going to become a they're, they're going to disappear because there's no it's not happening anymore. We we, we lament we, you know the, the editorial industry laments the fact that celebrities can just take pictures of themselves on their phone. That's neither a good thing or a bad thing. But the images we consume now are nowhere near the production values that were being created at, at the turn of the century or, or earlier. Totally. And I'm even thinking back to like when I was growing up, it was Disney Channel that I'm thinking of, like the connection to the, this, to this machine, you know, like bringing in um, actors and putting them into movies and television and taking their pictures and magazines, promoting products. And yeah. now we don't, we don't see that. Right. When I was growing up, I was looking at those magazines and those commercial shoots and these these mediums that were uplifting these these figures and creating them into the celebrity. But now it's you know, any 13 year old can pick up their phone and download Instagram and TikTok, and now they can just consume everything they want right through the apps. You know, they don't have yeah. to go out and purchase a magazine or, or exactly. do that thing. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And it's, I, I'm, I'm not, I'm not saying that it's a good thing or a bad thing or the way it was, was better. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not judging it at all. I'm just saying the, I, I know what it costs to make those pictures. And mm -hmm. there was a commercial justification for that. And I just don't know how that is going to be done now because um, there is, because there is no commercial justification. Um, there, it's, it's fascinating times. Yeah, for sure, and it's always changing. I, mm. I wanted to pull up this this picture of Pink because I, I love it. I love her attitude here. She seems so comfortable. Can you yeah. tell us a bit about the story behind this image? Yeah. So, uh, so, so when you see pictures like this. Uh, so many of them are taken uh, in a blink of an eye. Sometimes it's a 10 minute appointment, a five minute appointment. When I photographed Michael Jackson, I think I had him in front of the camera for three minutes. Um, and Pink was appearing in London. Um, and we waited very patiently uh, in the, the backstage area at the O2 Arena, which was basically 
below ground um, and you wait and you wait and you wait. And she arrived before she went on stage and with so many uh, high achieving uh, entertainers, just her, 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 her patience and charm was exemplary, really exemplary. Um, and yeah, we had fun for 20 minutes and, and uh, another another thing about images like this is so much is granted to the photographer that they've created this piece, but you're nothing without somebody who understands the camera and that that expression from pink, everything, the posture, the poise, the expression. Um, yeah, she, you know, she, th th those people are part of the creative process without a shadow of a doubt, because you turn up to photograph me for 10 minutes, you're not going to leave with, <laughs> with something as, as impactful as that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah. So that was my, that was my 20 minutes with pink. I once waited from noon till 2 AM for Alicia keys. Um, no. <laughs> yeah. From noon till 2 AM. And I've never been more angry with, uh, uh, a celebrity or a product or a PR never been more angry and I can honestly tell you having waited 14 hours uh, she walked in the room and we all just fell in love with her she was just so 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 charming and and elegant yeah um yeah the life of a celebrity photographer yeah <laughs> I'm sure that happened often um so let's look at this this dead mouse portrait too can you talk about this image a little bit? Uh, certainly, certainly. Dead Mouse was um, so Dead Mouse hadn't really broken when we um, when I photographed him, but the one thing that he had done was uh, was let his um, uh, his reputation as a disruptor, and he had he was he was very new to the house music scene, and was already dismissing house music as. Uh, as nonsense and he could do it with his eyes shut and um yeah he'd, he'd arrived as this sort of bad boy punk child of the house music scene so um so we i mean it, it, it's 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 hardly a new concept to do the the arrest wall but it the, yeah we definitely felt that that dead mouse was possibly possibly en route to become uh an eminem style um uh artists with a lot of problems um and yeah so there, there was the concept um and it's it's so strange i photographed lady gaga j before before her first single had finished climbing um and it's very it, it is strange when you photograph a new artist and then a year or so later you realize you photograph lady gaga or you know dead mouse didn't quite achieve her notoriety or her fame but it, it, you it's challenging when you meet a new artist to to remember that you have to treat them like uh, it, it's it's best practice to, to try and remember that you could be speaking to Michael Jackson here, but you're just speaking to him a little bit early in his career. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, he was cool. He was very cool. Awesome. All right, and I think the third image from Icons that is up right now is Bono. I, I oh. love this portrait. It's so sharp. Can you talk oh. about this one? Uh, yeah, yeah, but I mean, I, I photographed Bono a few times, and uh, there's a uh, yeah, yeah. It's it, he's going back to what I was saying about Pink. Uh, it's he, he is an incredible. He, he is. I love being around him because, as I've written in the description, it's it's you know he's become the probably the biggest rock frontman in the in the, the, the world. Um I, I don't know what's quite gonna happen with you two now, but um it and just being with this what basically just I, I'm just a boy from Glasgow and this this boy from, from Ireland who has become this thing. It he's great to be around. Great to be around. Um uh, I hate the term so down to earth, but i I just felt like I was with a some of the guys that I grew up with, he's just, yeah. And, but then again, you lift that camera up and bang, he, he knows, he completely understands. He, he, he completely understands that he, he is a person and a father of children. But when that camera comes up, he becomes Bono. 
Um, I have a, I'm, I'm planning to add to this collection. I have an animated series of images that I took of him dancing. Um, and every pose that he hit, I, I look back at them and I think you, you under, you, you, he understands everything about the camera and his persona's relationship with it. Um, but yeah, we had, we had some very funny and very fun days in Montreal and Berlin. Um, with Mr. Bono, as I like to call him, yeah. Yeah, I can see that in the description you specify, um, you know, planning shoot ideas, getting drunk, eating and staying up late backstage. It sounds like it was a relationship you were building there. That's awesome. Uh, it, would be, it, would be, it would be wrong to say that him and I are friends or that there's any social contact, but there's just, there's certainly a, uh, there's certainly an affinity. The, the, yeah, there's certainly an affinity there, yeah. Awesome. So we know for the rest of the Icon series on Ephemera, uh, we have Rihanna coming up, right? We have Liam Gallagher coming up. Yeah. And you have this, of course, this enormous archive of, of celebrities in this Icon series. Do you, so, see yourself so minting, yeah. Yeah, do you see yourself minting any more on Ephemera in the future? Oh, yes, definitely, definitely. And, I'm, and I am fascinated to see how, how, how the NFT market reacts to this type of work. Um, and myself and some of my peers are now beginning to create NFTs from uh, from portraiture like this. Some people are, are, are animating them or editing them or, or, or twisting them for the NFT market. And I'm, I'm really interested to see what the response is. Um, yeah, what the response is to these. Um, because I'm interested to see how the, how the, how the two worlds collide. But yes, so the next up will be, uh, next up will definitely be Rihanna, yeah. And there's some more Bono, and it, it goes on forever. It, it goes on forever. There's uh, Lady Gaga to come, um, Amy Winehouse to come, uh, lots and lots to come. Awesome. That's so exciting. All right. So switching gears a little bit, I want to talk about your second series that you started minting here, Clouded Judgments. So we have this image, which is uh, the first of the series. So can you talk about the concept behind this a little bit? Uh, I absolutely can. I've, I've, I've put an excerpt, uh, I've put in the description there my my, my motivation with, uh, with Clouded Judgments. I mean, I mean, for people who are watching this interview, this image now represents what my career is now. Um, I've, I've repeatedly throughout my career decided that it was time to close whatever chapter I was in and to start a new one. And I now uh, only create art photography. I, I use the camera to create art, which has been a strange, uh, a very strange transformation to stop thinking like somebody who provides a service, but to now be someone who creates work for its own critical value. Uh, and Clouded Judgments, Clouded Judgments is uh, the, I, I, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a dedicated uh, student of uh, Taoism, uh, Buddhism, and uh, Stoicism, three philosophies that I feel are, are interlinked, and uh, I, I'm a, a student of them. Um, and they're just the, I'm, I'm struck across society, so many of us of every social class, every physical shape, every race, creed, color, um, and every, every wealth level, um, are, uh, we seem to be, we seem to be, be experiencing, uh, let, let's call it anxiety and depression. We seem to be, we seem to all be sharing an experience of suddenly an, an emotional unwellness, uh, to, to some degree. Um, and I, my, the, the the thing that has helped me to come to terms with that and move on from it has been my studies in philosophy and all philosophies speak about the impermanence of of of, of anything of everything um and um clouds clouds are temporary and when we find ourselves beneath a cloud uh, and it can be just be an emotional mental state um it's very important to remember that that clouds pass, and they, they, uh, for, for any two seconds, they're not the same. They're constantly evolving, and, and they do pass. Behind every dark, overcast sky full of clouds, 
there is a bright blue sky and those clouds will clear. Um, and that's kind of what I set out to, com to communicate with Clouded Judgments. It's been a really popular series. Um, in the analog world, um, I have there are there there are prints with collectors all over the world, and there's two galleries currently showing them um, on continental Europe. Um, it's 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 my attempt to remind us that those those dark days um, they will pass. I love that. I when I when I first saw this series myself, I kind of understood it as like this disassociative state we can find ourselves in sometimes and in this like this fog, you know, and in that visualization of the clouds, I made that connection with right away. And there's there's a saying and I can't remember who said it right now, but this too shall pass. And that's something that I always I always think about like in every situation and it's it stuck with me for a long, long time. And so when you were talking about, you know, the, the cloud will go away and then the sun will come out again. That's that's what I thought of is everything is temporary and everything. Absolutely. will. Yeah. Absolutely. You've just touched on and you've just touched on uh, <laughs> stoicism um, and Buddhism. Um, this too will pass. You can trace its origins back to R Roman philosophy and everything is temporary. That's Buddha. That's mm -hmm. that's from his own lips so it, it, it's precisely that so it's this is a this is a series of images that's an attempt to the the collector or the viewer just to remind us of that and these are beautiful women in beautiful aspirational situations it affects us all it affects us all um yeah that's what this uh, that's what this collection is yeah fantastic i really love the environments you've built here and just kind of this like this fictional world you've created that's that's so relatable it's so relatable um so yeah these these are quite high production uh shoots they are um these are these are full set builds and stuff like that but, um yeah thank you it's um re relatability i feel is very important i i i want i want i want to try to communicate with my collectors through my images and if i can remind somebody as those clouds descend if I if this work can remind somebody that everything is still beautiful, we just have some clouds at the moment, and they will pass. Then, mm -hmm. then I've done my job. Yeah, it's it's something that we should all remember for sure. And uh, clouded judgments number three. This one will be coming to ephemera quite soon, yes. right? Yes. 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 Very soon. Very soon. Awesome. Okay, and then going back to. Uh, this first image we were looking at, this one currently has an offer on it. So if anyone watching um, wants to, you know, participate in a bit of a bidding war, go ahead. <laughs> it's a good time um, to bid on my stuff because I'm new to this. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, get in and grab it. Awesome. Cool. So we're ending the near of our interview, uh, the end of our interview time here. So I, I wanted to thank you, John Wright, so much for coming out today, for sitting down with me, for letting me um, ask you some questions. Thank you so much um, on behalf of everyone here at Ephemera for, for coming down and, and talking with us. Okay. Thank you, Claudia. Um, and yeah, I look forward to working with you for the foreseeable future. Thank you for having me on Ephemera. Awesome, of course. And for anyone watching, uh, you can go to the Ephemera Marketplace. John Wright's work is currently up and there will be more coming, so stay tuned. Okay, have a great day, everyone. Thanks, Claudia. Yeah, bye.